Okay, let's try to see if this will work. Here is the teach pendant on the NX100. And you can take a look at the screen here. And there are, and you can see, here's a status bar. Right now, this is in teach mode. If you see if I flip this mode indicator switch, it changes, should change to um, other things. Hold on. Turn off the e-stop. But I'm not in play mode because push is in play mode needs to be enabled no matter what. So I'll, maybe I'll show you that at the end, but that's where this is here. This here is if it's communicating. This is if, what type of mode it's in. So uh, cycle or automatic. Come on, what's going on here? And teach. So now if I go here, you'll see that change to you see that now that's an auto, or S is a step, meaning one step at a time, but those are the different steps. The second here is the administrative privilege. The security privilege. Right now I'm in editing mode, that's two keys. If I go to operation mode, it's one key. The problem with operation mode is I can't edit anything. And if I wanna to go to management mode, I need to put in a password. And now I'm in management mode. And you can see some more screens showed up, but that I'm not gonna tell you how to get to that. But here's editing mode. I can go down and down in editing if I want to. All right, so this is the speed. So if I hit in, uh, the middle buttons here, the hot, fast and high, you can see that it will go up. There are th four speeds. High speed, medium speed, low speed and inching. That's one pulse at a time. Or you stay on low. The second, this, this command here is your uh, jogging status. Right now this is joint. By hitting this button here, the cord button, you'll see now that this is in uh, world or rectangular. I think uh, Motoman calls it rectangular jogging. This is tool frame or uh, tool jogging. This is user frame, well, number one. So we'll talk about those at some other point. But when you see it look in Johnny 5S, that means it is uh, joint. This is what motion group is being controlled. You can control different motion groups. So this is motion group number one, okay? So if I try to zoom, zoom out a little bit and you can see the entire screen. Now here is the main, you know, these are different menus. If I click through some of them, they're going to change based upon what screen I'm in. So if I click job, you can see all the many different jobs, uh, all the different things like selecting job, creating a new job, job capacity, master job. This is where I could change cycle. So right now I'm on cycle or step. Um, here's arc welding. If I wanted to run an arc welding job, this is how I would do this. Now, in, this is something that's enabled through Motoman. You could have a palletizing setup here. You could have a uh, um, a painting setup, so it just depends. This one has arc welding. Variables is what they call their data registers or where they remember numbers. So in and out, this is where you get into your uh, your digital I.O. and in input I.O. Not all this stuff is what, what we're gonna be using. Robot, this is uh, all the fun stuff that deals with the robot. So your current position. So if I click on that, this is the pulses of the current position. If I hit select here on the pulse, I can change this to base or robot or user. And so if I go to base, that, that is positional data right there. It's, and if I'm, all I'm doing is hitting the select button. So I'll go to pulse. So this allows me to see what my current pulse is. If I go back, if I click back on robot, I can see the command position. That's where um, the current command position is where I want things to go. And this is, if I want to, you know, you may want to see this on different screens, which we'll show you. So, but you know, we can hit, we can change its look by going to um, layout. Uh, so shift layout, uh, hold on. Multi window, main menu, where is it? I need to go to. Oh, we're, oh, there's a reset. Um, 
Where is display? Display, robot, display, job, display. Oh, reset, cancel. How do I reset the... I forgot, I gotta look this up again. Setup, there it is. Setup, display setup. I can, um, initial, to go back to the initial layout and now it's set up. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so display setup is where you can change fonts and change buttons and all that other stuff. Um, you change sizes. So if I go display setup, change fonts, I can make it big, I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. I can bold it so you can see it better. But if I ever screw up, I can just basically have a reset. Um, yeah, we won't go into, this is where you save stuff. In this case, you need a control flash disk here. Um, we don't have a USB, some have a USB, but right now this is a control flash. So setup is where we can set up some of the other things, set up user IDs. Let's not, we're not gonna worry about that too much. System info, this is where we can view alarm histories. So we can see that in this case, there was an encoder error way back in, way back in 2010. Um, so it, that's a big deal. There's different alarms, major alarms, minor alarms. So if I can go, if I hit page, I can then use the arrow button to select down to user alarms. You can see different user alarms if there's any there. Uh, page, uh, minor alarms, you can see the list of minor alarms. So you can see sec safety segments, that was fairly new. Um, so you can see all the alarms that give you the code and when and how and all that fun stuff, okay? That's under system info, alarm history. Um, you can click on your, you may have click on your version. This will tell you what version you're running. If you ever call Moto Man, they'll want to know all this, okay? But if I go into job, job, that's my job. And if you notice up at the top, there's different things that are available based upon what is selected. Okay, we'll get to those later. Um, so here's the main menu. If I click this, so if you wanna see more, all I did was hit off the main menu and everything disappears. So this is basically the main menu. If I hit this button here, then it also disappears. So Moto Man was developed for you to do everything with the keys, but when they developed touchscreen, they didn't get rid of that because some people like to just to do all of that. So if I hit and say that shortcut right there as well, and nothing is defined, it's giving me an error. Everything is that you need to know is gonna show up right here. So if you do something wrong, it's gonna tell you. Um, if, you if the e-stop is on, you can see that is right there, e-stop is on, it's gonna tell you robot stop by PP emergency stop. When in doubt, hit that, look at this status line here. A um, Couple other buttons of direct open we'll use in jobs. Um, uh, if you use this button here, you can toggle between the areas that you can highlight to use your arrows. So if I go back and hit select, you know, I can use my select button. See how I'm using the arrows as I'm selecting between so think of if you've used Alt Tab on a keyboard, that's kind of like that, and I've hit Cancel. If you have a question on anything, you can always hit the Assist button sometimes, but in the future, this will be your undo. Um, coordinate, this is how we shift between our jogging coordinate system. Um, layout, I don't, th you know, if I had a, an other controllers, I can use them, I can use this as multi-window. Um, Usually, if it's colored, this is where you can use the shift as a, you know, so see how it, see how there is a, you know, but this may not be allowed on everything. So just really, the only buttons I use up here is this, this, sometimes this, and sometimes this, okay? Looking more at the teach pendant, here's my jogging buttons that we discussed. This here is a high-speed override. I wouldn't recommend using it. This is how you can inch up your, your manual speeds and again, your roll and otherwise. The buttons that you'll use a lot down here are shift, backwards, forwards, test start, interlock, and you know the like. Here is backspace, motion type. Here's all your number buttons. But again, if it's yellow, 
I can use this to do things here. If it's got this little bar over it, usually that's a word of thumb that I can do something with this, something with a bar over top for some reason. Okay, so like for instance, oh, I forgot. Hey, take a look. What do you see there? Shift, oh, where, where is it? Everything's in Japanese. I think it is shift, uh, it's shift something. It's shift, uh, or select some, yeah, there's. Select, select layout will change it to Japanese, <laughs> or one or shift layout changes it to Japanese, or select tool set, um, where one of them changes it to Japanese, and I forget layout. Is it shift layout? Select layout? No. So, because this is a Japanese company, they wanted a fancy way of doing this, and what was it, shift area? Yep, shift area, that's what it was. So if you want to confuse someone, you can change all in Japanese and back, and it's fun. Yeah, I remember some of the stuff, so. But this is a quick and dirty tutorial on everything for the Teach Pendant. We'll go into more later, but that's the big thing. So one other thing I want to point out. So. Under, uh, where is it, system info, no, it's robot, and there is work home. This is where everything is in zero location. One of the things I'm going to have you do today is work on jogging this, into, or maybe next week, is jogging this independently, so I make sure that this is off. Servo on ready. It should be blinking, and then I hit my e-stop, and now I should... So if I want to go to that position, I hit forward, and it will. You can see the pulse counts changing. Um, something I want to point out is once I drop my servos, a break will take place. What happens is when when I disengage my e stop and the servos disengage, what's going to happen is is that the the for the brief second when the servos drop out and the brakes engage, something moves. So watch this. I'm just gonna undo that. And now when I hit the ins notice that there's a change. It's subtle, but notice there's a change. Because every time you drop you drop the e-stop, it's gonna sli change slightly for the servo motors because of the weight of the robot from the momentary difference between when the brakes engage and when the servos kick off. And so what we're going to have you do is jog on inching to try to get this today to, and look how much I'm changing this. We're going to have you try to get this to zero one at a time today. All right, fun times. I hope this was helpful and